Hey guys, here we go into a video on Sean O'Malley's kind of failed drop step feint attempt um, and kind of how that footwork led to him losing his fight against Chito Rivera, uh, who it actually looked like he was going to wind up dominating on, his, on the feet uh, because of his ability to feint and cross the line and control him. Uh, so what we're going to be taking a look at is how we got to this point. Um, the fight had, was over already. Um, Sean O'Malley was actually already injured before this point. Um, but I want to point out here is that when he's taking this step forward, he's dropping his weight onto the ball of his foot and not onto the heel. Now, this is going to be a very important idea as we move forward. But I'm going to close this clip as it's not really very useful um, because the fight's already over at that point. Uh, what we want to be looking at is this clip here when he's fainting with the hit, with the kick, moving back, and then he crosses the line to the back foot here, right, uh, crossing Chito's line, and then he looks to cross the line back real quick again to the left side and then cross his weight back to the right side again. And he winds up stumbling and falling here. We're going to watch it one more time. But you can see that he falls down here. Now, the reason this is is because... When he's fainting and probing, we're going to look at this clip was just moments before that step. Watch him on his back foot here, right? See how he's on his on the ball of his back foot here? Get me a little graphic here. Right here. See how the ball of his back foot is, is down, but the heel is up, right? And the ball of his front foot is down. That means all his weight is on the front foot. Now, what's going to happen is he's going to transfer his weight back to the back foot but he's not gonna bring his heel down. Notice it's still not on the ground, right? This is indicative of him not actually transferring his weight. His weight's not actually going anywhere. He's blocking it with the ball of his foot. Now, the reason that that's important is because as he gets fancier with his footwork, again, pay attention to the heel not being down on the ground, and he's balancing on it or trying to move and you know, kind of awkwardly transition and hold his weight in this position. Now, as he looks to cross the line three times in a row, right? Once to the right, once to the left, and then once to the right again, by not getting his heel down on the ground during these sequences, he's setting himself up to uh, only be carrying his weight on the balls of his feet. And that means that when he crosses the line for the last time, he will not have any of his weight actually on the ground. And that's why he winds up stumbling. Now, whoops, don't mind the mess. <laughs> um, now, what we want to look at are going to be these kinds of motions here. So take a look at this step here. This is going to be the equivalent of his drop step here stepping forward right and he's using that as his feint now uh, at the end of the video we're gonna get into a little bit about why um, that's bad and we're gonna be taking a look at Mike Tyson practice his version of the drop step but as you can see when he goes and, fo and feints forward he's usually stepping on the ball or almost always stepping on the ball of his foot however when he makes a strike notice how that pattern is broken and now he has his heel on the ground so he can actually carry his weight from the back foot to this front foot and then drag it across the line and at, into this kick into Chito Vera's leg. But being able to do that and drag his weight all the way from the back foot to the front foot by planting this heel, okay? Very, very, very important. However, when we noticed in the clip when he gets injured, we know that he's doing these kinds of feints, right? The ones that are very similar to the clip here where he's stepping with the foot on the ball of the foot and not the heel. We're going to go ahead and close that clip and get back to a few more examples. But this is a great example here. Stepping on the ball of the foot here, going forward, and then the ball of the foot going backwards. Again, not getting his weight into this position, blocking his weight transition. Now he has to cross the line again without being able to get his weight into the ground. So he only has the strength and the power of his of the ball of his foot and his toes as he can't actually use any more of his leg, right? Because his weight is not actually in that position. Right now he's carrying all of his weight currently on the ball of his foot, trying not to solidify himself into this position so he can move out of it. And then stepping immediately onto the ball of this foot as well. We'll go back and take a look at that again. But forward and then onto the ball of that foot going backwards. And you can even see the little half step that he has to take because of the fact that he's not transferring his weight very well. Um, and he kind of falls off of his balance. One, 
two, three, and his third beat is actually in the same position. Slowly closing these guys down. Now, this is an example of him using his heels more appropriately to feint as he crosses Chito Vera's line. Crossing the line, taking a step with his heel here, and then taking a step with his heel here. You can tell that his weight is on his heel here because of this line right here. Okay, His knee, his heel is going to be right under it, but his head is right here. There's going to be a line between all three of these pieces. Okay, And now, when he takes a step forward, boom. There's a new line between those pieces as well. It's going to be his heel down here, his knee which is here, and his head here. Again, making a line showing that he has correctly transferred his weight and has can, can control it and distribute it. Notice the difference in scenes like this when he's stepping forward, right? And he steps forward here. Here's his heel. Here's his knee. And then here's his head. But none of it is going in a line, right? I know those are ugly graphics. I apologize. <laughs> but um, but again, when he takes these steps here, right? Now, this is the most easiest demonstration of him using the, the, Dempsey, uh, the Jack Dempsey uh, step, right? Transferring his weight or, or trying to drop step into this position as he steps into this position and then steps into another one here. But he doesn't have any weight going forward, again, because when he takes his step, where's his heel? It's all the way out here. Where's his knee? All the way over here. Where's his head? And none of these pieces of his kinetic chain are supporting each other. So when he takes his next step, if it's not going to be taking from here, transferring his weight here through this knee, and then crossing the line and transferring his weight to the front foot, and getting his weight into this heel instead, if it's not going to be that, then he's not going to have any power in his next shot. Um, and then as you can see, taking that next step and not able to really go anywhere because his weight is already compromised. His weight is, is no longer in his front foot. He doesn't have anywhere, any more ability to stretch his technique and, and um, move his foot from out from under his head anymore uh, because it's he's already stressing his technique too much. I guess I'm not really saying that the best way. But um, that brings us to Mike Tyson practicing a very similar idea. Now, the, the Jack Dempsey drop step is essentially uh, carrying your weight from one side of your body to the other through your heels here. Now, Mike Tyson is going to do that as he rolls under the line here, right? And see how he gets his weight from the back foot all the way to the front foot here. And right here, a perfect demonstration of having his weight planted in the ground, his knee here, and then his head here, making nearly a perfect line straight up, right? And this is indicative of his ability to use that drop step and effectively transfer his weight into this position. This is what allows him to then do a squat, essentially, and blast out of this position and throw power shots like that left hook right there and then still be able to drop step and move into these positions like here on the back foot. But again, we're going to watch him do it again. Um, all three points, heel, knee, head, right? It's close. All three points, heel, knee, head. That one's dead on, right? I know my graphic's not. The next one, heel, knee, head. All three of them, right? And his weight is being supported on the ground. Very, very key ideas for crossing the line, especially if you want to have power, especially if you want to have good body mechanics. But you need to bring your weight with you. And what's going on here is Sean O'Malley is attempting to sneak into these positions using the drop, the drop step technique, but he's not actually bringing his weight with him. So he winds up cheating it and not having his heel down when he tries to plant his left his right foot on the ground here and winds up falling over and kind of, you know, breaking his foot, I suppose. I'm not really sure what the um what the damage was. But one thing I want to point out here is even before he was hurt, right, in this clip here, we've been only watching O'Malley and his back heel, right? And his inability to get his weight on that back foot. Um, but we're not really watching Chito Vera here sit here two and a half minutes or two minutes into his 
you know, biggest fight ever. And he's standing there doing nothing, right? A little bit of hand control, but look at those weak ass feints. He's not crossing the line. He's not really fainting or transferring his weight. He's stuck. He knows that he's not as fast or agile, or I'll say even on, in a better term, um, he doesn't have the ability to change positions as quickly as O'Malley, and he knows that. So he needs to stay in as neutral of a position as possible so he can hope to make the correct move. And actually, a lot of fighters are going to make this mistake against O'Malley, and it's actually going to be what gets them knocked out. So I believe that if O'Malley wasn't using this poor fainting technique and not getting his weight on the heels when he's transferring his weight, especially when walking, that's another big problem that he had in this fight, um, is that when he was just walking around randomly, right? Seems like this. He's always on the ball of his foot, except for when he's trying to attack, right? But hopping around on the balls of his feet here, forward, back, landing on the ball of his foot here, right? Landing on the ball of his foot as he goes forward, ball of his foot as he goes backwards, ball of his foot on his, as he goes forward with that feint, right? And again, the feints are the part that really hurt, right? Because you're not really sinking your weight into that position, God damn it, right? You're not really going to sink your weight into that position if you don't get your heel down. And it's going to stop you from being able to move out of it. Now notice when he wants to strike, right? When he wants to make an actual attack against his opponent, boop, boop, boop. That's pretty good, right? Well, that was kind of cool. I don't know how I did that. Straight line. I mean, that, that kind of ruins my graphic of knowing how to make a straight line. But the idea, his heel, right, is under his head, right? His knee, you know, it's going to be a little bit dynamic. He's about to make an attack, right? But most of these pieces are congruent here, right? So him using here the drop step to set up a kick, right? Using that attack, that technique appropriately here when he wants to attack by sinking his weight into that position and landing a kick. Um, but um, but the fact that most of his, his movement is based off moving off of the balls of his feet when he's not attacking, um, and he doesn't incorporate that idea that he needs to use his his heels even when he's not punching, like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's not punching here. These are the same idea as feints and slips, right? And they set up and put you in the positions to land these kinds of shots that your opponent don't even see coming, right? Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And um, also, you probably made it this far, maybe. But um, if you didn't, uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon. Um, we discuss ideas like this constantly. And right now, one thing that we're going to be talking about is the drop step and training it and using it as a basic training tool. Um, I do think that it's a, an important piece of boxing um, and your technique. But I don't actually think that it's a super high-level technique. I mean, it's a high-level technique, but it's not a super high-level um, strategy, right? Um, in the ring to be using that to punch your opponent, right? Notice O'Malley effectively using it to set up a kick instead of a punch, right? Um, so there are going to be applications in it that I'm not going to be as particularly privy to um, if you're an MMA fan, um, but if you're a boxing fan and you're looking for boxing coaching, personalized coaching, uh, personalized coaching from your own training videos, your own sparring, your own um, your own heavy bag work, your own shadow boxing, um, sending you... Uh, Join my Patreon, send in your videos, and we'll get your videos up on Patreon. And there are also a lot of other Patreons, uh, patrons that you can learn from, from all different varying um, skill levels. Um, and uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty cool pretty cool experience, guys. Um, and we're learning a lot, and, and I'm getting a lot of really great feedback. So um, uh, I might start sharing some of that stuff with you guys, too, on YouTube as well. Um, but anybody who's interested or wants more advanced film studies as well, um, I'm doing, you know, uh, usually like hour-long film studies on my Patreon almost every day. Um, you know, right now we're also doing Salvador Sanchez. We're going to be looking at some Nazuma, Azuma Nelson. Um, but we watch lots and lots and lots of film on Patreon. There's almost content there almost every day. So uh, if you're interested, check it out. It's 20 bucks to sign up, 20 bucks a month. Um, and it's, uh, from what I hear, it's been an incredible tool to a lot of people. So thank you guys.